Hey guys, thank you for hopping in on the Mike Lambert Show. So today, we kind of have a, a mixed segment from Mike on the bike, on day bike, and um, the Mike Lambert Show. So, anyways, I'm going to start off with, uh, hmm, well, with Mike on the bike stuff, which uh, that whole segment's about racing, pimped rides, trucking, traveling, motorcycles, wheelies, all that fun stuff, and stuff I've seen out there on the road, and, um, what we're gonna start off with is, like, just how asinine people can be, pretty much, and it's just, uh, I guess it can be entertaining, so here's a podcast. So... Since this pandemic happened, I've noticed people being incredibly impatient, incredibly rude to each other, and just some crazy stuff out there. So I'm going to start off with a a story, a couple stories out in my home, Colorado, Denver, and the whole regional area. So we got a, depending on what you call it, a three lane or a six lane, three lanes each way, Quebec Street, a main street, um, out in Denver right under the bridge of I-70. So one day, I was trucking, and I witnessed this whole thing go down. This one guy, he made a mistake, and was just in the wrong lane, and just quickly going over, cutting people off, and almost lane-changing into people. So he was, like, in the wrong from almost causing a few accidents. I mean, I'm sure it was a little bit accidental, but anyways, I bet one dude flipped him off, because he almost ran it. The original dude I'm talking about almost ran into a couple people, so I bet someone flipped him off. He parked in the middle of a busy road, hopped out, started banging on the window, and I swear to God, it was real-life Grand Theft Auto, just a fist fight going down in the middle of the road, hopped back in their cars, and they speed off. So that would be the intro to uh, a few of these stories. Before I continue on to more Denver, Colorado stories, I'm going to take a step over to Seattle. I spent a year out there, and uh, I saw some crazy stuff I've never seen out here. Uh, I want to say it was I-5 southbound um, in the Tacoma area, well, the SeaTac area, basically in between the two. Uh, Stuff I've never seen out here in Colorado. These guys were definitely speeding, and they were playing bumper cars. The guy... One dude was playing dodge, the other guy was literally trying to ram him off the road. I have no idea what their deal was, and they got too far down the road for me to see what happened, but that was just craziness. Like, no concept of lanes, and he was literally just trying to ram him off the road, and... Another thing, though, I've seen... I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, tell me if I'm right, but I've seen signs out in Seattle that say, uh, no street racing, like, there's apparently street racing areas out there and well i pulled up to this uh stoplight just like exploring the town doing some uh, caviar deliveries you know and uh don't forget out don't forget to check out uh my independent contracting section i i got a lot of info that might help you out if you want to work for yourself but anyways i pull up to the stoplight and it's very busy i'm like what's going on and i did not have a racing car i did have this lime green mitsubishi but the engine was not for racing inside the thing Uh, next thing I know, so I pull up to this intersection, and I'm next in line for a drag race. I'm like, oh shit. And, uh, I'm not really speeding, I'm just like, okay, go. And, uh, literally, when it was my turn, some dude flies past us. Cops! So we all scatter. And, uh, it was kind of funny. I scattered by myself. I was like, I'm not, I'm not part of these people. I'm getting out of here. The ironic thing is, I went to a gas station in the opposite direction, and then suddenly, like, half the crew showed up in this parking lot, and then, hey, now it's a car show. This is a little interesting, but that was a little crazy out there. So let's come back to Colorado. Some of the few crazy things I've seen. So, in the last few months, we got another busy street out here. If you're not from Denver or Aurora, out here in Colorado, it's called Peoria. It's another six lane or three lane, whatever you want to call it, three lanes each way. So, me and my girl were driving southbound on Peoria, 
and there's three lanes there's plenty of room to go around and we were speeding a little bit not too bad it's 40 miles per hour we're going 42 to 45 somewhere in there nothing extreme but that was way too slow and plus there's three lanes he could have went around us because this guy behind us he was flashing his high beams and just blaring on his horn because we're going too slow 45 and a 40 way too slow and it's like dude why are you so impatient like the thing about that why it bothers me is like you're not special we're all the same like if you get my drift you know we all wait in line at the airport together you know i don't need any special privileges and some people the entitled people really get on my nerves so anyways he he finally just swerves around us and then he blasts off to like i mean i didn't have a radar but 60 to 80 miles per hour just i was like like why why are you so impatient and so i'm a professional driver and that's not just my license that says i'm a commercial driver uh i have over 10,000 hours under my belt if you've ever heard the phrase if you do anything for 10,000 hours you're an expert i'm pushing 20,000 hours now and um if i can look it up really fast let's compare that to the average citizen let's go to google how mm. Ooh, brain thoughts on a recording Ugh, or brain farts how much does the average person drive in their lifetime Let's see here. According to a study done by the Harvard Health Watch, an average American spends 101 minutes per day driving. That means that in a lifetime, an average Joe spends a whopping 37 hours driving a car, assuming that he or she starts driving at 17. So, for, mm, that's interesting. 40,000 hours for the average person by the time they die. Mm. But I am a professional driver. Like, I drive 10 hours a day, five, six, seven days a week. So, and that's a lot more if the average person only drives 90 minutes a day. So, mm, let's do a little math on that. So, if the average person drives an hour and a half, and I do kind of 10 times that, mm, let's see what times eight. Okay, so I drive eight times as much as the average driver. So, let's just take that 40,000 hours times that by eight. So, by the time I die, I'm going to have. 320,000 hours if I keep being a professional driver for the rest of my life. Anyways, and I've been through plenty of classes. I remember my very first driving class. Um, they talked about, like, pay attention to the other people down the road that swerve in and out of traffic. They're just being unsafe. Because more often than not, and I've, I've been through dozens of classes and multiple people said it, you're going to catch up to them more than likely down the road. Like, if you're on the highway, two, three exits down the road, you're going to see them again. If you're on a busy road, you're going to see them at the stoplight two miles down the road. Like, them driving reckless, almost getting a ticket, almost killing someone else. Yeah, it doesn't actually get there faster. I used to work at Lyft Scooters, and, uh, well, it was like a third-party company. But I used to pick up Lyft Scooters at night, and the lead drivers would literally tell you, like, oh, cops don't care. They know what we're doing. We're running red light. And they'd tell you to run red light, speed drive on the wrong side of the road, make sure you collect all those scooters, and, like, telling you to do all these illegal things, and it's like, no, like, I, I've driven big rigs, I've driven auto parts, I've delivered pizza, cops don't care, if you're breaking the law, they'll take it to you, so I can't believe they were teaching that, and it's really funny, because I did abide to the law, going 65 and 65s, 55s and 55s, 40s and 40s, da 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 and it's funny, because, I mean, I remember one time leaving the warehouse, like, all the other employees just, like, boom, poof, floored it. And it's like, okay, so I'm the last one to leave. And I'm going slower, too. But I was the very first one downtown at the gas station that, like, we kind of were all meeting at. And they're like, who'd you do that? And I'm like, I don't know, I was safe. Got here in a timely fashion. So being impatient really can't hurt you. Patience is a virtue. Anyways, let's see here. I'm kind of getting off track. Let's see, we talked about the Puri, dude. And, like, yesterday. I had a lot this week, almost daily. I see it even a couple times a day driving out here. Uh, people blaring their horn because they want you to run that red light. Like, you know, you're next in line at a red light. 
you can't go because it's red, but the person behind you blowing the horn, wanting you to go. I even saw this one dude, like, ah, like, well, he was like, fuck you, swerved around and just ran the red light himself, like, let's get down to the psychology now about this. So, I think the pandemic really broke, uh, that's interesting, fire department's walking by, anyways, I think this pandemic, like, broke humanity mentally, because, like, just all this chaos, uh, has been way more abundant lately than before, and I also do blame the internet, I mean, the internet is nice, you can learn anything you want, you can find out anything you want, you can talk to your old relatives instantly, so all that technology is nice, but it's, I've noticed it makes people rude, it makes people impatient, instant gratification and all that, it's like, you want something, you can just push a button, get it now, and I mean, back in the old days, even just go back to the 80s, um, you had to find a payphone and stuff, you had to be patient for everything, and now, and people, I think, I didn't live in those ages, but I think people were a lot nicer back then, because now people are just so used to getting things now, their way now, this now, that if they don't get it now, they're going to throw a hissy fit, so I see that all over the place, so a mix of the long term, uh, internet and just the quarantine, the pandemic, I think is breaking humanity, and it's, uh, makes me very skeptical on the future so uh if you like if you're interested in doing podcasts and get even getting paid for them listen to the sponsor real quick and then uh we're gonna go into we're gonna carry continue with the topic i brought on earlier about people being just asinine um names are gonna be left out but uh it's gonna be more personal so uh just hang tight here's the sponsor So thank you for listening to uh, our sponsored segment. And uh, the very last thing we left off on was psychology. So I wanted to bring up one little thing. I wrote this poem called Pangea. And um, it's in my book, Memorandum in a Cruet, uh, by Michael Lambert. Uh, Michael Lambert spelled with a three, I-C-H-A-E-L. And then Lambert, seven, A-M-B-E-R-T. Uh, you can get it at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Walmart, all over the place. So Memorandum of Cruet by Michael Lambert, it's the very first act, it's the very first poem, and I, uh, I kind of covered this 10 years ago in 2010, um, about infinite knowledge, telepathic text messages, and all this stuff, uh, this part's a little more jokingly, because it could have been kind of planned by Steve Jobs and Apple, the eating from the tree, taking a bite, Adam and Eve, gaining knowledge, it's kind of what is their phone, I mean, all this knowledge, and kind of telepathic, I mean, you bring this phone 100 years ago, 200 years ago, it's like, oh, witchcraft, so, anyways, you should check that out, because I even talk about, because uh, I'm related to some people that are so against the vaccines, because, uh, haven't you heard, the Illuminati is microchipped them, or Bill Gates has microchipped the vaccine so they can track us, well, you know, if where you're, ever you're listening to this, you're being tracked right now on that device, so it's really ridiculous, but I did cover all that in this uh, poem from 10 years ago, so if you want, check it out. And now let's continue on to the more personal stories. So, there's a few different stories uh, about how people can be so asinine. Um, I'm going to start with one of these shorter ones. So, if you're listening to this, and if you don't know who I am, uh, there's a little description, there should be a link around, michaellambert.com with the 3 and the 7, don't forget the 3 and the 7, where you can view all my art, all my music, my 360 videos, my photography, my sculptures, anything. Uh, so, anyways, I'm over on Instagram, and I'm just following some random profiles, trying to, like, you know, follow for follow, promote, promote, you know, like, hey, trying to get my stuff out there more, further, uh, so anyways, one day, uh, there's this, uh, there's this Asian band, K-pop band, it doesn't even say it's a fan thing, it's just a whole bunch of Asian pictures, and, uh, of this band, 
from Korea. And it's like, okay, follow. No big deal, you know? No big deal. So I get a message from this completely Asian profile, uh, and it says it's a chick that I know, and I'm like, what? How? Maybe an old email saved in my phone, and that's why that profile was suggested to me? But it was so weird, because there was nothing about it that even said America, nonetheless Colorado. So I get a message, and she's going off on me, don't follow me, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I didn't even know this was you. And it's just so ridiculous. I mean, straight up a trap. And she writes these like letters to me, just like one story. I have no idea what she was talking about. Completely made up and I'm not even gonna talk about it. Another one, she's just being like so narcissistic, in my opinion at least. I like to be nicer, but she like, ah, there's more to her story, but off the top of my head, one of them was like, you only got a job at Highlands Ranch to stalk me. And I'm like, girl, it's a big town. How can one job at a Target, like, on the, it, also on the other side from where she even lives, be, why would I even do that? I have an apartment to pay for. And honestly, the main reason why I got the job down there, the second, it was actually my second job, was to help pay for college from my apartment. And at the time, 2009-ish, maybe 10, it was 2009 into 10. Well, honestly, I thought the hottest girls lived in Highlands Ranch. It had nothing to do with her. I wasn't even into her. But then she's messaging me, I can't believe you're still obsessed with me. I'm like, girl, I, I haven't even thought about you in like seven years. And then she's like sending me screenshots of my own like Facebook profile. I'm like, I don't even know where your profiles are. I haven't even seen like anything digitally of you in years. And then like she's trying to make it out that I'm like obsessed with her and it's so ridiculous. It's just so asinine. <sighs> So it's like, leave me alone, and she just laughs. Definitely, well, she did threaten me with restraining order over that. It's like, really? Sure, go ahead. I'll show up in front of the cops, judge too, and be like, yeah, Asian boy band profile. No idea. These other three things never happened. The fuck? I really hate dealing with people. The older I get... I can feel myself get more senile and more like red from that 70s show. Um, as much as I'd like to help, I'd rather not help more. Dumbass, you know, type stuff. So anyways, let's carry on to the next bit. With this next bit, I think the best part would kind of be to start off from day one. So, mm, sorry, that's called dead space, dead silence, and that's no fun for the listener. I'm so sorry for that silence right there. So, anyways, there was this chick on my Facebook, and, uh, to, uh, I'm gonna have to avoid any descriptiveness to this, uh, but she seemed chill, and, uh, I was trying to hook her up with someone that was similar to her type, um, for, like, the year before this, and, uh, anyways, I finally met her, she was like, yeah, just stop by my work, and also I did, and, um, for some reason, I just had a bad vibe about it, so I blocked her, like, as soon as I got home and met her, I just had a bad vibe, like, and I was right, because here goes the story, so I blocked her, and I was like, okay, told my buddy, came back to the apartment, my best friend, uh, my dad, honestly, was a piece of shit, so I roommated with my uncle, he was like a fatherly figure, but we did the roommating thing, his financial equals and stuff, um, uh, yeah, I came from a very dysfunctional family, if you heard my, the whole Michael Lambert show, so anyways, So yeah, I just tell him, like, yeah, I just got a bad vibe. And my uncle's called himself a piece of shit. He's like, you should have just tried to fuck her, type of thing. I'm like, no, dude. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah. But, but, literally, like, two weeks later, he dies. And I'm, I just go into the shock state. So I end up unblocking her and be like, hey, do you want to hang out? So her and I start hanging out. And in the meantime... 
my roommate uncle doesn't just die. My uh, other uncle, um, kind of like my rich uncle, but he was a role model. He worked his ass off for it all. Dies, and then a couple days after that, uh, one of my cousins die, and then uh, yeah, I literally like everything I worked for in the past five years leading up to this, uh, I quickly ended up losing. Cause it's like I handed him a couple grand because he was struggling. He could he before he died. My uncle roommate handed him a few grand, so I didn't have money. But I was like, man, I'm good on rent for the next six months. It's good. It's good. He had trouble struggling, and his mom was rich. I knew he was good on the money, except for the fact he died. So I didn't even know what happened to the money. So that turned into me being broke, getting evicted because he died, and I'm like, oh my god, just going through this depressed shock state. Cause it's like uh, I don't really have anyone, and um. Uh, yeah, so anyways, when I got evicted, I put everything into the car I had, and, um, I mean, if you look around, uh, or if you don't know me, or anything about me, I used to have this Honda that I pimped out, I mean, I put Lamborghini doors on it, uh, I souped up the engine to take it to the racetrack and all this stuff, and then, uh, I was rebuilding my home studio, had a little green screen room, I had, um, a whole bunch of instruments for, like, music production and stuff, so... Anyways, uh, I put everything in this car, and I'm like, oh man, um, part of the reason my uncle was struggling, my aunt sued him for, like, everything he had, so, and she's also an emotional mess, so I just tried to keep away from that, but I, I didn't have a choice, I was like, hey, can I just park my car over here at your place, so I did, and, like, literally, a day or two later, he gets towed, had no idea where it was, the time I figured it out, I owned... I owed the towing company Wyatt's Towing in Colorado, and since then I heard plenty of people say how predatory and fucked up that company is, and yeah, they actually, since then, they've towed every car I have had, and even yesterday, uh, they towed my car, it was legal, it had a parking permit, they're like, we're just gonna take it, and I contacted them, they're like, Suck. they're basically like, sucks to be you, so I contacted the permit company, and I was like, this is messed up. I, and I'm not that type of person, but I was like, I'll take you to court. This is just messed up. So anyways, I, yesterday they gave me a car back for free. But anyways, the first time all this went down, my car was legal. Just because all my stuff was in it, they thought it was abandoned. So they just grabbed it. And basically, somewhere between roughly $30,000 of everything I worked for, including the car, including tablets, including MacBooks, everything. And uh, I also kind of realized my old friends were never friends, they just thought it was funny, like, or, like, or try to tell one friend something, and he just responds, was like, I have stuff I can pawn, well, I don't have stuff I can pawn, because literally, it's all at the towing company, and they won't let me get anything, and I did not have a thousand dollars in my pocket at that point, and if you just heard, I gave my money to my uncle that died, so it was just a shitty-ass situation, everything falling apart in three months, I had 12 pets, and they all died with it, too, I don't know what was up with that. I fed them. I didn't ignore them. But they just dropped dead one after another. I was like, man, dude. So all that sucked. Went through, like... If you include the pets, like, 13 deaths in, like, three months, which sucked. So anyways, I thought there might have been a silver lining. Because I tried hanging out with that girl. And um, we had close, but I didn't... We got close to, you know... But, um... I didn't... I know I wasn't feeling it. I didn't want to... With her. Um, but I did, like, sleep next to her cuddling like every other night for a couple months um and at that point in time she was nice um she even said some weird things like you can sleep in my bed me and my sister will sleep on the couch i'm like no that's that's messed up <laughs> no I'm, I'm 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 lost i'm hurting but no i'm kind of just gonna cry in this parking lot and sit in my car i'll come hang out when i'm happier so anyways after a couple months into that and just more and more stuff falling apart i mean at first meeting it's it's like oh you're so cool you got pets you got a cool car you got you're doing wheelies and motorcycles and next thing i'm basically sleeping on a bun on a bench a uh, bus stop like i don't know what to do <sighs> so that's just the intro to this story this is where shit just gets fucked up because there was another dude involved um and I quickly learned he was only talking to me, planning or plotting to just bring me down. And some other people thought I had millions of dollars. Like, no, no. Like, I've owned a business 
and I've made like $9,000 in a day and 12,000 in a week in the past. But when you own a business, yeah, you have those weeks. It's feast or famine though, because what came after that is $25,000 bills I owed. So it's like, uh, it's like I'm not actually rich. So anyways, uh, every single one of my quote unquote friends were no help. Even on a conversation level, like I wasn't even asking anybody for anything, just like, what do I do type of thing? Just, does anyone have advice? This is just sucks. So I, I remember there was a point in time I was just like, well, let's try to be happy. Let's sing a song. Now the one bites dust. Boom, boom, boom. Now the one bites dust. Boom, boom, boom. Oh yeah, my grandpa died too That in that time frame. And then my stepdad died. Like, now the one bites dust. Another one bites dust. So anyways, if you listen to the Michael Lambert show, you would know I... I'm way better off with my dad, not in my life. But I was literally at a point where I was like, I should just fucking kill myself. What, that's wrong? That's wrong? You go through everything I just did. You'll feel the same way. Didn't act on it, but duh, super depressed. <sighs> so she made that all about her. Other people made it all about her. No one was any help. Like, ugh. so it's like, okay. So I ended up deciding to hit up my dad and I ended up living at this prostitute's house. I was like, oh my God. And she was like, just talking my ear off about how good she gives blowjobs, and she was not. Mm, mm. She was like 40, 50, and just, eh, it looks like a, a sunken in meth face, and just, ugh. I was very uncomfortable. I, I should have went back trucking at that point in time, um, but I was smoking weed, and I can't do both at the same time. So I was posting on Facebook. I was like, man, someone help me. Someone get me a job. Someone get me out of here. I'll take a flight out of here tomorrow. And someone actually did, and she helped me, so she deserves a shout out. Um, online she goes by Penny Power so she helped me she was like hey come to Alaska so uh, be sure to check out the Dillingham, se Dillingham segment it's good but anyways I go out there when uh, that chick ghosts me this dude tells me like after I was like basically at her place every day every other day um, this guy tells me and he's just laughing about it he's like man and he knows all these names and stuff I think Nah, I'm not gonna say their names because it doesn't even matter. Um, but he was like, "Yeah, she's like seeing four different dudes and just laughing at my face while everything's going wrong." I'm like, "Okay, fine." Uh, I was really ho like, I'm like, uh, I was really hoping that was my silver lining, but I guess I'm just gonna live in complete blackness, no love, no friends, no family, mm, just death, mm, just loss. Yes, mm, prostitutes, uh, very horrifying shit. And then like some 17 year olds is like, uh, just mocking the whole thing and just. Uh, she was friends with those just immature stuff. And, yeah, um... Eh, I can feel myself getting bit bitter through life, and that part sucks. So let's continue on to where the story gets just effed up. So I'm out in Alaska after she ghosts me for a month or two, and then, like, she texts me out of the blue, and then she sends me pictures of her and this dude, and then she's telling me, yeah... We met up, we just met, and we got a hotel, and we fucked, and blah, blah, blah. And then she's, like, just trying to do anything to hurt me. And the only thing I'm really responding with is I'm working 16-hour days. Uh, I'm working seven days a week. I'm just working 16 hours every day. Mm, the 16 hours. That's literally, and she was like, why are you only saying that? And she was just, because she was only saying stuff trying to hurt me. Like, I fucked this dude. My sister's like, why, am, why are you talking to him? And all this stuff, just trying to hurt me. I'm like, whatever so this is where just things just go off the deep end so after the Dillingham thing I'm like which was in Alaska I'm like man uh, I, I was like man I don't know where to go so I was like and I've always been fascinated with Seattle so this was like 2016 17 I think it was 2017 I first went to Alaska might have to double check on that don't fully quote me on that but um when they were flying me back out of Alaska I was like just drop me off in uh Seattle so I basically had like three to four thousand dollars after working for a month ish in uh, Alaska so I bought a car I just lived out of that car I slept on the beach I would go to public parks brush my teeth I found this homeless shelter where I could shower so I could at least and I didn't want to hog it because I even though I was completely down on my luck sleeping outside at least I could sleep in a car not in a bush I met some weird people, or cool people, not weird people, cool people, um, 
also weird people uh, this one homeless lady asked for a cigarette she just was so grateful she just grabbed me and kissed me on the lips I was really grossed I was like I would have been a lot happier if you didn't do that but anyways I met this one dude out there who literally during blizzards he would just sleep in the bushes and he was a happy dude which is crazy I'm like man dude really hmm that's kind of inspirational so So, after being in Seattle for a while, uh, I ended up uh, roommating with my dad, um, but I was just down on my luck. Um, I mean, for my, if you listen to my whole story, for my own mental health, it's better if we are never around each other. But we tried doing that until the very end of that, it just reminded me of the old days when he was on meth, pawning shit taking paycheck taking my paychecks and all that stuff um so but we're not quite there yet so after the alaska thing this is 2017 i believe i might be a year off um towards the end of that i did message that chick like just trying to make peace not interested in the dating thing just trying to make peace you know i believe in, in world peace like why can't we all just get along so, anyways, this is where things got really ugly. It's like, just because I was depressed, there's a, there's another dude involved with this that will not be named. But, because I'm about to bring up a couple other people, but don't forget, uh, I should probably, uh, the same dude that said that chick was basically seeing multiple guys at the same time and laughing in my face about it, him... Um, I don't know, we'll just call him the laughing face dude that enjoys people suffering. Anyways, I did message her a couple times. Nothing like, hey, like, I didn't even want to sleep with her in the first place. And, because she made a big deal about that. Like, I was, like, mm. when other people ask, or I guess other people made a big deal about that. But there was nothing about me wanting to be with her that existed, just like, we hung out a bit, can't we just, like, chill and be friends, type of thing, so, anyways, this other chick that, this guy knows, the laughing and face dude, he knows both these chicks, uh, she happens to fly out to Seattle to, with her friends, or to see her friends, and she invites me out to this, uh, club in downtown Seattle, and I was like, man, there's clubs down here, I tried finding them, and she showed me one, she invited me out, and then she, I just kind of chilled back, and sat at a table, and then she came up to me, she was like, let's dance, and not like a romantic type of dance, just like dancing next to a friend type of dance, so anyway, she invites me out, and uh, yeah, nothing wrong with that, you know, hey, I didn't even make a move on her, I didn't even like compliment her, so a couple weeks after that, I'm back to, I mean, I was so depressed, I wasn't really getting anything done, the tags on my car were expired. I couldn't drive around town anymore. I was living in my car, so I was basically just literally quarantined in a Walmart parking lot to avoid the cops. So I don't lose the car I'm sleeping in and completely sleeping outside broke because I used my car to make money on, like, Caviar, which is, like, Postmates, but that's on the West Coast. But she messaged me letters, like... The gist of it, she wanted more response out of me to her letters. She wanted full letter responses, basically. She's like, you're only responding to one of my sentences... And I'm like, I'm like, just leave me alone. I'm struggling right now. And anyway, she just blocked me after that. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I really don't need drama when I don't even know how I'm going to eat today. So, or I haven't showered in a month either at that time. Anyways, so that dude comes back into the picture and texts me out of nowhere. And like, he's like, stop stalking her. I'm like, stop stalking her? The fuck are you talking about? She invited me to hang out. And turned into drama and I didn't want to deal with that so it was just weird so more people get involved after this too um this was 2017 and I don't know some old crushes I had way back in high school like 10 years prior add me just to laugh at me which was funny but they also knew him so there was like this whole conspiracy thing beginning to start with that so and I'm like man I'm desperate I need a job and I kind of want to get back to Colorado because I the chick we have been talking about, I had no interest in being with her at all. 
I was actually stuck on this other chick that I've been stuck on, not anymore, but I was stuck on for like years. Um, and she was going, she was technically single and she was going through a lot of things. I'm like, maybe this is my silver lining. Can I be there for you? And there was like a tease, like, yeah, at first. And I was like, man, I'm, I want to get back to Colorado instead of being homeless in Seattle, even though I was just homeless in Colorado, it just sucked. So anyways, so I found this job, this trucking job and, uh, the very first place the job sent me was, uh, Pennsylvania and the chick I've been, I was stuck on four years, not the chick we were just talking about that, uh, I'd sleep next to every night. The chick I was stuck on for years, um, she has connections to Pennsylvania. So then these other people got involved because I was like, I was just happy I wasn't homeless anymore. I'm about to make some money and uh, eat again and shower again and all that stuff. I was happy about that. So he sends me to Pennsylvania and these other, and I posted on Facebook like, yay, I'm off to Pennsylvania. So they twisted around and they're like, oh, you're just going to Pennsylvania to try to find her. Like, how asinine can you be? Pennsylvania is a big place. How the fuck can you just like, show up to a state and just find someone it's just so ridiculous and also she wasn't even in there she just like had some family out there or something and it wasn't even her family uh, so anyways it was just uh, it's just so asinine stuff but anyways so apparently me being out in Seattle was talking apparently my job sending me to Pennsylvania was stalking, and I finally get back to Colorado, and by the time I actually got back here, it was kind of weird, we had the whole high school reunion thing, and then after that, yeah, mm. uh, are they friends, I don't know, because like, that was the last time I saw them, and outside the reunion, I haven't seen them since high school, so, I don't know, they're not really friends, never really been there, through anything I've been through, so I don't know what to do, I'm basically finally back in Colorado, I think 2018 finally and that job I had um they really screwed me I worked for free for them for months and uh apparently I signed a independent contractor thing so they had well I found out more laws afterwards but when I took them to the labor board the labor board's like we can't do anything I'm like really you can literally pay someone zero dollars just because it says independent contractor but I found out later uh, you can sue them but I Unfortunately for me, the statute of limitations is up on that, and that's whatever. They, they do owe me, like, seven to ten grand, but too late there. But anyways, after working, I get back to Colorado. Still broke, so I had to go back to Alaska again, then I came back to Colorado after that. Bought a car, living out of that car again, starting from scratch again, grabbed a hotel, and I'm like, man, I don't know what to do, so I was just doing my delivering thing, and, um... Uh, there was a new club uh, in town. Like, I've been to the other ones. I've been to Vinyl, I've been to Milk, I've been to Beta, I've been to Trax, I've been to all of them, but there was a new club, Temple. So I was like, mm, I'm gonna just start going here at night. Maybe I can beat some friends, people. Maybe I'm finally lucky, because I was single for uh, eight years, and that chick that I would sleep next to every other night, she said both. She was like, we were dating, you know, and she said we'd ever dated, so it's like, whatever. You literally said both things, so I don't know. Um, and whatever. Yeah, we never had sex, so I guess that's the defining thing of if you dated or not, if we had sex. We came close, but I didn't want to. But anyways, so I start going to this club, Temple, at night. And it's cool at first. I It was mm, a little too much drinking, but that helped me meet literally every single person inside that building from the GM to everyone's security, to the bartenders, I did, I, I could tell, I made, I, uh, I did make some of the females uncomfortable by accident, just being a little too drunk and weird, but I, I, I avoided them and just talked to the bar, and just started getting my drinks with the male bartenders, because I wasn't there to make anyone uncomfortable, just hang out and hopefully meet some people, um, but anyways, security starts coming at me with some weird stuff, oh, let me rewind this a little bit, so in the process of me even getting back to Colorado, there was at least a half a dozen people messaging me that kept, like, I'm not even thinking about this chick, but they keep messaging me uh, about the chick I, I was sleeping next to every other night. And just 
they other people just constantly bring her up. I'm like, I don't want to talk about her. I don't think about her, or I don't want to think about her. Only reasons because you bring her up. So I'm going to Temple hoping to meet someone, and then finally, Security Temple's like, well, more so text messages while I'm not at the club, or like, uh, bringing up that I'm stalking her. I'm like, the fuck? And they, the security themselves, even said. She's never been here. She doesn't come here. We don't know why you're here stalking her. Like, it literally makes no sense. Uh, the only thing is, like, a bar she likes going to is, like, a mile down the road. It's too close or something. Going to a different club. <sighs> just, it's just asinine as fuck, honestly. And in this whole time period... Some people I've never even heard of, like, uh, some random dude from, uh, Arizona tags me saying I'm stalking him. I'm like, dude, I've never even heard of you. Literally, this post is the first time I've ever heard of you in my life, and you're claiming I'm stalking you. What the fuck is all this shit? It's very annoying. Incredibly. And, well, I don't know. Def defamation law, defamation laws, and all that stuff. Um, but it's kind of funny too, because the messages themselves during all this prove that she's the one stalking me, even though people believe her. So it's so ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. Like I go, like I used to when I'd have nowhere to go, I'd just go to the tattoo shop where I got most of my tattoos for ten years. I don't go there anymore because she threw a fit. It's too close to me. It's like, I don't even bump into you. Even go into the tattoo shop, I'm a few thousand feet away from you. No way I would see you. I can even take the back door and prove, or I mean like make sure I don't see you because I really don't want to. <sighs> Except for one day, I did bump into her in the parking lot and that turned into a whole thing. You, I was only there, like other people saying, I was only there to see her. I'm like, no. I was trying to get some gauges for my ear and see my tattoo buddies. Jesus. So, I don't go there anymore. And it's... There's more to the story, and it's just... So annoying. I can't be in Seattle. I can't go downtown. I can't be in my hometown. I, like... Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Just messed up. And, like, other people... Like, even my tattoo buddies kept bringing her up like their wording was like what about the chick that works over at blah 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 what about the chick that works over there what about the chick that works on repeat about the same person I'm like am I the one even talking about her all of you are talking about her to me it's a trap it's a big ass trap I don't care she can go do her thing I still don't know what she's been doing for the last three or four years so it's balls Uh, there's more to it, but uh, all in all, I can say I just don't really like people anymore too much. So let's go on to one more story, and this one gets even closer to home. Now this part of the story, we're going to start it off way back in about 2006 into 7 and I don't know because it's family but I don't know I also don't have any family in that regard too and we're going to talk about it so at that point in time my dad had foot surgery uh, I don't know which one it was if it was Vicodin and Oxycodone or something but he was taking that and then he got addicted to it so then he was like starting to ask people for some coke and stuff and he was going back down his drug path and it got ugly I mean he uh, it got ugly so anyways when that was going down I mean I was raised at my grandma's for 13 years and I, I basically only moved in there for about a year or two um, in with my dad and stepmom and then my stepmom asked my dad to leave when he started getting addicted to uh, drugs and stuff again and uh, between my dad and stepmom, I do have two brothers. Unfortunately, and I do blame my parents' fault, or my dad and stepmom's fault, 
why I don't know them at all, and probably never will. By the end of the story, I'm gonna say um, something. But anyways, so for the summer, I just go over to my grandma's. Like, that's where I grew up. And I uh, hung out with my two best friends at the time. They were cool people, Alden and Cameron. I don't mind mentioning people in a positive light. And also, it's hard to censor family. It's just hard to censor that. Because you can't convey it if you just say, Oh, yeah, Jack did this. Like, who's Jack? That's not even his name. That's just a random name. Anyways, so... Uh, I wanted my computer. Shortly after going back to my grandma's. And, uh... I ended up getting it. And then when I got to my grandma's, it, like... A big computer, you know, the old school like CV monitors and the big ass desktop. Uh, shit, I can't even think of what they're called. The computer guy, but the big ass desktops. It's a massive thing. You can't just like put it in your pocket and lose it, you know. So, anyways, at that time I was pretty innocent and gullible, and it just kind of disappeared from my grandma's house. I was like, what happened to my computer? So then I asked my stepmom again. I was like, hey, can I, thinking like, maybe I'm just so confused, like I, maybe I made a mistake? Uh, maybe I never got my computer. So I called her and she's like, you already picked it up. I was like, well, yeah, you're right, but where is it? Uh, that's probably the very first thing that got pawned. Let's get to it. <clears throat> so anyways, this part about my dad pa taking my paychecks for drugs, him trying to run me over with an SUV and all that stuff, um, yelling at my grandma for 20 bucks until she had a stroke. It's like, when my grandma had that stroke, I remember that day. It was 90 degrees out, and my grandma wanted me to take the shovel to school because it was snowing, and she just couldn't comprehend life anymore. She had a stroke because my dad was yelling at her. And I don't know if my dad's just upright retarded because I remember looking at his face. He was like, oh, nothing's going on. Can I have my $20 now? My grandma can't even comprehend life at that point. <sighs> So, anyways, um, because I went to my grandma's for the summer, she was like, no, you can't see your brothers. I was like, okay, uh, maybe I'll try again later. And then, I mean, the whole divorce was going down. Everyone's talking shit about each other. Um, my grandma wanted her stuff gone from the house and all that. So just back and forth, and I'm just in the middle of it. And I don't know, I graduated early from high school by my complete self. My dad's busy on drugs. Stepmom's over there doing that shit, and, um, I mean, my grandma's a grandma. She doesn't, she'd be sweet old lady. She's not gonna hound me for homework and getting my schoolwork done on time, but I always did, by myself. Graduated early, too. So, anyways, so for years, it was always that. It's like, oh, yeah, you can come over. And, like, now nah, we changed our mind. You can't come over for a while. So it was always like that. So, I mean, two years have passed by, I wouldn't see him. Three years have passed by, I wouldn't see him. So it's like, great. So anyways, um, I did just mention something. The year came when, I don't know, apparently my dad never remembers it. I do. Uh, and there was someone else with us, one of his exes. So yeah, because my dad even tried to make it seem like I made the whole thing up. But nope, there was a witness. And I mean, yeah, I got it written down that she said it happened. Not trying to assume or anything, just something I've been through. Besides, soon him do no good. He's always, like... Last, last time I saw him, he was on heroin at a prostitute's house, not even paying rent, so hey, uh, and I don't care about that, just, I want a peaceful life, even though, during all this, innocence completely broken. So, uh, so going through that for a few years, it's like, okay, um, but then the year came around, 2012, where my dad tried to run me over, and like, that definitely broke me, um, I lost some friends just not being able to hold myself together during that. And, um, but I mean, that's okay. I mean, do you really need friends that aren't really there for you? Because I can easily twist a lot of, like, their attitude around easily. Like, anyone that's ever been, like, raped should be glorifying and happy about it. They should have been lucky. They were almost murdered or raped. I do have a couple of close experiences about that, which I'm not talking about on this segment. <clears throat> <clears throat> Anyways, so 2012 comes around, and I finally meet up with my stepmom, and um, it's like 
she doesn't believe it. So it was like, okay, whatever. At least I, I did get a free, um, classes at Aurora Mental Health because my dad did that. Um, but I wrote to an old teacher and I wrote to her and my stepmom was like, well, don't go backwards, go forward, go forward. There's like, all I'm around is this negative chaos. I'm reaching out, trying to ask for help. I mean, like professionals understood that she, I mean, they didn't. So in that time frame, the 2012 time frame, um, let me see how I need to look up the distance. I need to ask you guys if you can walk this, walk this in like 30 minutes. Uh, let's see here. One second, one second. Sorry guys, one second, one second. So let me just uh, repeat while I'm getting this set up, because it's, ah. Uh. So can you guys walk this in 30 minutes? Because at the time, at the time I did write a letter out, so I ended up staying with my stepmom for like a month or a couple weeks. How fast? Five miles in 30 minutes. Is that possible? Five miles in 30 minutes. Let's, well, let's ask Google how long that would take. Okay, so Google off the bat says I'll take about two hours to walk that. Um, I guess if you're running, you could do that in 30 minutes. If you're running in full sprint, But anyways, I bring that up because like, I finally got back to my stepmom's and she was like, what took you so long? Should have only taken you 30 minutes to walk and it was like five miles away. It was like halfway, it was literally halfway from a uh, middle of Aurora to like basically halfway to downtown Denver. Should have only taken you 30 minutes. I'm like, man, it did take me like an hour and a half to walk that. I stopped for like 15 minutes just to breathe, sit down for a second then keep going. And she thought I was off, like, I don't know what the heck she thought I was doing. She thought I was off fucking around or something. So I was like, and you're raising my brothers? Jesus, Murphy. So, anyways, so I ended up taking up two jobs. And uh, I'd get off at like 2 a.m., the buses weren't running. And then uh, she tried to convince me to live at work, like, I've had a lot of jobs in my day. I mean, I know it's possible if, like, you got an understanding boss, you can go live in the warehouse or the the stock room in the back. <laughs> but in almost every case, I've actually never seen it. But I, I mean, I guess it's possible if your boss is understanding. Can I live at work? But also, um, there's not, I mean, most jobs, there's not a shower there, so you're going to be stinky all the time. But anyways, my stepmom tried to convince me to live at work because, uh, after I, after she was mad that I wasn't coming back to her place anymore, I'm like, I'm not coming back to your place anymore because I work one job and then the buses aren't running. So I kind of sleep on a, a bench outside and then I walk 10 miles until, or at least until the bus is running. Then I catch a bus and I'm actually a little late to my next job. And then it's like, uh, it's like three weeks in and you're just back and forth going and uh, getting kicked out of McDonald's when you're trying to just take a nap in the booth um or taking like or when the buses are running take a 10 minute nap like I wasn't even sleeping and anyways she's just like mad about that it's like sorry I'm not coming back I don't have a car absolutely no help and it's like you're raising my brothers so anyway, she wanted the key back, so I gave her the key back. And uh, basically, because I said I stopped at my grandma's for a nap once. And she was like, oh, well, give me my key back then. I was like, hey, hey, hey. And that's fine. I mean, I didn't have to live there, but like, just, okay. Because I also talked about my dad taking like my very first job's paychecks. And I know what it was for. I mean, he never paid rent at my grandma's. He... Maybe once a year he'd bring home like $50 of food, like once a year. But for the most part, he was always spending his money on drugs. 
alcohol. He'd always have this big bass bottle of skull um, and on some form of drug, just trying to get through his divorce and self-destructing himself. <sighs> but like, she's she was sticking up for him during that whole thing too. Like, oh, he just took it for the money. Oh yeah, okay, I guess that's okay. I guess I'm just an ATM. I guess everything that's mine is his, I guess. I'm over 18, so I own, I'm, I guess he can just have it, so he can go get high, when I'm trying to focus on school and, like, get my shit together, I mean, like, literally, a cop about two weeks ago knocked on my door about a car he stole from me ten years ago, and apparently that car is still connected to me out there somewhere, but I'm like, nah, I haven't seen that car in ten years, so, uh, I mean, like, mm, I'd be really upset if I get arrested over his bullshit. <sighs> Kind of hence why I'm recording it. But, like... Oh, it was just a headache. And she, through the years, she's always been like, Yeah, you can come over, and then instantly changing her mind. And, um... Earlier in the segment, I talked about that boss that didn't pay me... Uh, the seven to ten grand, somewhere in there. So, at first... I was waiting for him to pay me, so I called them. I'm like, yeah, I'm coming back to Colorado. I'm thinking I have money for a car, an apartment. I'm just going to hit the ground running when I get back to Colorado. So I call them. I hear my brothers in the background. They're happy. They're like, yay, Michael. And they're super excited. And then, like, next thing, he's like, the boss is like, I'm not paying you. What? So, basically, I'm living outside in Seattle still. Just, what the fuck am I going to do now? I just wasted six, seven months working for this guy, trying to get my shit together. And fucked again. So I end up contacting them because I did call them when I first called them. I said, "Hey, yeah, everything's good. I don't need help." But then I contacted them again because they were planning on me come back to Colorado, and they were excited about it. Or at least my brothers were. Um, but yeah, well, now I'm homeless and I have no money. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just sleeping outside in the bushes, using my phone, trying to get through it so she texts me back she's like nah I don't think you can see him anytime soon so okay then that was three years ago and that's at least 10 15 years into it man 12 13 years so at this point I don't know if my brother's knocking my door yeah you can come in we can get to know each other finally the reason we don't is because of her and like a lot of my family knows she's controlling that's how an asinine it is. And I forgot a story about the 2012 thing when I was working those two jobs. She texted me once. She was like, you make $8 now. Basically, she was like doing the math. And she doesn't pay taxes, first of all. So, But she was like, okay, eight to $8 an hour times 40 hours a week. Sometimes I was only get 32 hours a week because eventually working the two jobs, it fell apart. Because I, I was late to one. I wasn't showering for at all, because I was never, I was never around to shower, I was sleeping outside and shit, okay, but basically she was like, 8 times 40 is 320, 320 times 4 weeks is $1,280, so she's like, you're making $1,280, that's plenty of money for an apartment, a car, insurance, all that stuff, but the thing was, well, first of all, taxes, and I was a dumbass to listen to both sides of my family, they were like, they can't get you for medical bills, don't worry about it. Because my, my aunt is on my on the other side of my family. She's a big fan of hospitals. Just like, let's always go to the hospital. He, well, jokingly about this part. Oh, we got to hang now. Let's go to the hospital. So, but they all believed uh, you never had to pay that shit. And I'm the one getting garnished for it. So I'm bringing home like 700 a month. In like, and I'm bussing. And I already tried doing the two-job thing. It wasn't working. I, I mean, I could give up showering and give up beds and homes and stuff until I had enough money, but it fell apart. But anyways, like, ugh. the thing is, it's just, it's just asinine assuming things. You know what they say, when you assume things, it makes an ass out of you and me. So she's coming at me saying I make plenty of money. I make like 1300 a month. Back then in 2012, that's enough. I'm like, first of all, the cheapest apartment I can find is $600. That leaves me with $100 for bus fare, for a phone, for food, for electricity, for water and trash, 
Hmm, well, let's see. I could live in an apartment with no electricity and eat and walk to work, so that's fine. I could live in an apartment with electricity and not eat at all. Eventually I learned about food stamps, so I guess I could have ate off food stamps. But it's like, this literally doesn't work, and you want me to stay here? The fuck? So, all that advice, I mean, people being asinine on their own end, like, it does remind me, I told my dad once, I was like, people just like, a judge instantly, and my dad was like, that's good, it's good they judge, like, really? Like I just said, you're making an ass out of you and me. You assume things when you're making judgments about all that. Like, why aren't you showering your lazy ass? There's not a shower around. I'm sleeping outside on veggies. Why don't you have enough money? Because I'm not making enough money. Jesus, Murphy. So, I don't know. There is... I could extend this out for a few hours, but I'm just going to cut this podcast right here. Um, if you listen to the whole Michael Lambert show, uh, this is basically probably going to be a, at least my auditorial autobiography. So... Thank you for hopping in and listening, and, uh, during one sitting, I don't think I, uh, covered everything, so there's probably gonna be at least a part two to this little segment, but thank you guys, thank you for, uh, I guess it started off as, like, Mike on the Bike segment, but then it just became the Michael Lambert show, but, uh, yeah, thanks, guys.